Okay, continuing on with our chemistry unit, our next topic is bonding. So um, we've done all that we've done so far with chemistry, especially talking about atoms, subatomic particles, and also the periodic table, because uh, that's very important for understanding bonding, especially the periodic table and electrons. So we're going to continue um, <clears throat> using what we know about the periodic table and about electrons to help us understand bonding in chemicals. Okay, so uh, the first thing that I probably need to do is define what a chemical bond is. So a chemical bond is just the force of attraction um, that holds two atoms together. So um, you might have more than two actually just that it's just the force of attraction that holds atoms together sometimes it's just two atoms one and one that's being held together sometimes it's it's like 10 20 30 different atoms that are being uh, held together so the chemical bond is the force of attraction that holds those atoms together whether it's two or 20 or or you know 50 whatever okay so um, we have to talk about electrons because electrons are the subatomic particle that uh, is what makes bonding possible. Now, um, not all electrons either. So if you remember when we were talking about electrons and the periodic table before, we, we talked about valence electrons. Now, if you remember, uh, and I'm going to use this periodic table that I have on the screen here, if you remember that the periods over here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7, the rows or periods, that told you how many electron energy levels that there were. So all of the elements that are in period 2 means they have two electron energy levels where their electrons can be found. Okay, and then another thing that the periodic table tells us has to do with the groups or the columns. So we have 1, 2, and we're going to ignore 3 through 12 because they're kind of schizophrenic, like you never really know how many valence electrons they're going to have. And we'll talk a little bit more about that when we do uh, metallic bonding, but for right now, don't worry about uh, groups 3 through 12. And then we skip over to 13. 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18. Now these numbers, uh, these group numbers are really helpful because uh, for groups 1 and 2, all of the elements in group 1 have one valence electron. All of the elements in group 2, their atoms have two valence electrons. Then if we jump over to 13 through 18, all of the elements in group 13 have three valence electrons. In 14, they have four. In group 15, five. In group 16, all of these elements have six valence electrons. Excuse me. And then in group 17, seven. And in group 18, eight. Now, um, let's talk a little bit about group 18 because this will help you understand, hopefully. Okay. Um, the elements that are in group 18, first of all, are um, called the noble gases, okay? So that's, that's just kind of a name for this uh, family, if you will. It's the noble gases. So you have helium, neon, argon, krypton, xenon, radon, and this one that they haven't even named yet. We won't worry about that one, okay? So all of these... Um, in here they're called noble gases they are gases at room temperature so uh, if they were present in this room then they would be a gas right now another thing about the noble gases is that they are what we call stable in chemistry in other words they don't like to react they don't react well with other elements they're kind of standalone they're loners they like to be by themselves and um, maybe think of them as like the cool kids okay so they're really calm they're laid back they're stable they don't have to be with anybody they don't have to react they're they're happy and content just the way they are okay um, and they have either two as in helium or all the rest of them have eight 
valence electrons. Now you know helium only has two because helium's only got two electrons to begin with. All right, so all of the noble gases are considered very, very stable. All of these other, all of the other elements on the periodic table, they want to be like these noble gases. Okay, they want to be stable. They want to have, in most cases, eight valence electrons. Uh, it has to do. We we call it the octet rule. Octet, O C T stands for eight. It's like octopus, um, uh, which has eight eight legs, right? Eight tentacles. So um, they have a complete octet of valence electrons, or in the case of helium, a duet. So um, hydrogen and helium, they want two valence electrons to be stable. Helium's already got it, so it's very stable. It's a noble gas. Hydrogen wants to be like helium and have two stable, uh, two valence electrons to be stable. Um, so it is the opposite of stable, which we say is reactive. Okay, and then I also think that we talked before when we discussed the periodic table and what it could tell us is that uh, as you move across the periodic table from left to right, you become the uh, elements become more stable. Okay, so oxygen is more stable than boron and boron is more stable than beryllium, and calcium is more stable than sodium. So as you go from left to right, the elements become more stable. Now that's not to say that they are stable. Really the only truly stable ones are here in group 18, these noble gases. And all of these other ones want to be like the noble gases. All right, so um, valence electrons, <coughs> so Two or eight is the magic number, right? Two for hydrogen and helium, and for all the rest of the elements on the periodic table, eight is the magic number for stability, and they all want to be stable, okay? Um, let's define valence electrons again, just in case you don't remember. The valence electrons are the highest energy electrons. They're in the highest energy level, electron energy level, uh, and they're the furthest from the nucleus. Even if an element has like 56, uh, let's look at let's look at barium. Okay, barium has 56 protons and 56 electrons normally. Okay, it has 56 electrons, but it only has two valence electrons because it's in group two. So when we talk about chemical bonding, we don't care about the other 54 electrons. I mean, they're electrons, poor things. They're just electrons like everybody else, except they're not valence electrons. They're not in that outer highest energy level. So we just consider them regular electrons. We don't really care about them when we're talking about bonding. Okay. So valence electrons is the is the center of attention right now. All right. Um, let's see. What else do I need to tell you? Um, Okay, so we've talked about stable and reactive. Um, one thing that we're going to practice in class, especially when we start doing specifically uh, ionic bonding and covalent bonding, is uh, we will use what are called dot diagrams or um, Lewis dot diagrams. They're named after this scientist, right? But these electron dot diagrams will help you because they allow you to focus on just the valence electrons and not worry about you know the other like I said the other 54 electrons that barium has so we'll be doing some of those in class if you wanna you know take a look online and see what dot diagrams look like if you uh, had me for science last year you've done some work with electron dot diagrams so it won't be completely new concept for you okay um, then there are three main types of bonding that we're going to be studying this year they are ionic covalent and metallic bonding. Um, I'll give you a brief preview now. So ionic bonding uh, is bonding between metals and nonmetals. So if you remember there's this little line down through the middle of the table where the metalloids come. So the metalloids uh, are this nice, if you see this little nice green, if I 
put the cursor there, you can see all of the metalloids highlighted. So everything to the left of those little stair steps, they look like uh, they look like a staircase, right? So everything to the left of that is a metal, and everything to the right of that is a non-metal. So ionic bonding deals with a metal bonding with a non-metal. So any um, any molecules, compounds that you see that have a metal and a non-metal, that is uh, a bond that's um, that is an ionic bond. Okay, and we'll talk specifically more about what that is. Uh, but it basically has to do with the transfer of electrons or giving and taking electrons. But it always involves a metal and a non-metal. Okay, and then covalent bonding involves only uh, non-metals and non-metals. So um, all these guys over here, the other non-metals, halogens, noble gases, so everything over here to the right of the stair, let me put the little staircase, so everything over to the right of that, when they bond with um, other non-metals, so non-metal and non-metal, that's a covalent bond. All right, um, and then I also want to uh, remind you very quickly that even though hydrogen is to the left of the staircase, so let's put the staircase back up there, and you see hydrogen over there to the very far left, upper left, um, remember that it is not a metal. It's put in group one because it has similar uh, chemical properties to all of the other elements in group one. Specifically, it has one valence electron, but it is a gas. It's not a metal. Okay, and then the last would be metallic bonding, and that, of course, has to do with uh, when anything to the left of our little staircase, when those bond together. Okay, so three types of bonding, and that's where we'll be going with our next um, video lectures, and I hope this has been helpful. I'll see you in class. Thank you.